What, so what happens to René Clair after this period in France? Well, he continued to work in France, and there is a film which I've always wanted to see and I've never seen, uh, called Le Denier Milliardaire, uh, which I presume is following something of the same sort of themes. Uh, I, I, I really haven't heard anything about that. But uh, by 19, well, 34, I suppose, uh, he had been taken up by Corda and brought over to England, uh, where he made uh, The Ghost Goes West, which uh, had all the prestige of Corda in his heyday. Uh, Robert Donat in the, the leading role, uh, Perinal was brought over as the cameraman. It was a very prestige production. Uh, and René Clair either remained um, or uh, came back a year or maybe the following year uh, to make another film in England with uh, Jack Buchanan uh, and then he went out to California or at least his next film came out of California uh, whether it was his bid to get onto the international market rather than the more restricted French one um, I, I have no means of knowing and I haven't uh, seen any speculation on the subject. Uh, but he seems to have arrived in California uh, before the people who came as refugees after the, uh, or about the time of the fall of France. Uh, and that uh, during that period uh, he made more conventional type of films, but uh, uh, certainly with I Married a Witch, uh, he, he made it for a, uh, one of the, uh, the major studios and it was a, a very considerable success indeed. I mean, it, it made uh, Veronica Lake's name. Uh, and uh, the other films that uh, he made, uh, which include It Happened Tomorrow, he was working for for a smaller company. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it, it's a film that bears uh, very much uh, his imprimatur. Uh, and uh, again, I've never seen the, uh, the, the version of uh, the Agatha Christie, uh, Ten Little Indians, um, which I think is now known as Then There Were None. Um, but he, he was working in very much the, the commercial American cinema. But it also is evident from the dates that uh, the moment the war was over, he returned to France and uh, I think very uh, enigmatically his first film back in France was called Le Silence et Dor. So uh, it, it, it could be that there was a lingering suspicion that uh, the coming of sound uh, in the way that it had been imposed on the industry by America um, was not to his taste and that he would like to have gone on experimenting with the relationship between natural sounds, music and the image in the way that he did in Alu La Liberté.